Hi kids, it's Mr. Lin, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to mat a picture or project. A mat is just kind of a simple paper frame that you put around it to give it a finished, more clean look. Um, the first thing you want to do is make a plan. This is good life advice in general, have a plan. So I drew out a pretend mat on this piece of paper. And I'm going to measure the width of Daniel's portrait here. Thank you, by the way, Daniel, for volunteering the use of your picture without my asking you. And I'm going to measure uh, the width of it, but actually just a little bit less than the actual width because the mat or border has to cover the edge. So I'm going to measure from about here to here, and I'm getting seven and a quarter. So I'm going to write that down, seven and a quarter. That's the size of the hole or the opening. Um, and actually that was the, uh, the length, so I should write that here instead. Mistakes are sometimes part of the process, guys. Uh, and then I'm gonna measure the length. I'm getting about 10 and a half. That still leaves me a little bit of room right there to overlap. Um, so 10 and a half this way. And then we actually have to add uh, a little bit to this because we just measured the size of the hole, but we have to add the width of both sides. We uh, typically for our one set the width as one and a half inches and one and a half inches plus one and a half inches. So, you know, this being one and a half here, one and a half equals three. So we have to add three to these two numbers we originally got. So ten and a half plus three for the total length of this is going to be thirteen and a half. I can't write upside down very well, but I will try. Okay, 13 and a half, and then we'll add three to seven and a quarter. That will give us 10 and a quarter. So that's how I know the whole size of the entire uh, mat has to be that size. So I'm gonna come over here on the paper cutter. I'm gonna cut one uh, length at 10, uh, sorry, 13 and a half. Is that what I had? This is why I have a plan so I can reference it. And then the other dimension at 10 and a quarter, like so. And then I will take it over the mat cover, which has already been set at an inch and a half. This fence here is adjustable, and I set it here at an inch and a half. Now I have a couple tricks here. The mat board tends to kind of flex one way or the other, and if it's curving like concave like that, and I press down with my fingers on this fence part while I'm lifting on this part, I can get it to hit like that and I know it stopped at the right point. And then I can simply just draw a line and I do that on all four sides like so. And those lines tell me where to stop and start my cuts with this razor blade mat cutter. It's sharp so be careful with it. Um, there's also two little bumps right here that tells you where to stop and start your cuts You always keep those two bumps on the inside of these two pencil lines I drew and you want to start by lining up the line on the right side of the cutter with the line on the right side of your mat board. Can you show us that nice and slowly when you... Yep, we'll get these little grooves right here in the mat cutter to, to line up on this track here and then you might want to come around this side Tish so they can see it uh, a little bit better. It's a head brick. So that groove lines up on the track, and then right there, we line up the line on the right side of the cutter with the line on the right side of on, the mat board. Kind of dark. Okay. But then Point right lined to your up, line with your pencil. Right yeah. here. Okay, so then we can push it down. The razor blade just went through. You want to hold the, the mat board tight with your fingers here or up here while you're sliding over. And make sure you stop right here. That's really important. If you keep going, you're just going to cut the whole side off like that. So you stop when the line on the left side of the cutter hits the line on the left side of your paper. So these two always stay within these. Two. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. You do that three more times, like so, like so. Like so, and voila, you have a mat. One last tip, guys, is when you set this down, 
We don't want to set it down so the blade hits the table. The blade gets dull and then doesn't cut very smooth. You always want to set it on its side like that. Thanks for watching. Like this. Set it down on its side. Not like that. Oh hey kids, there's one last step to the matting process and that is to attach the mat to the picture. And I have a really cool tip for you. Sometimes um, kids will try to do this and they'll slap this on here and they'll kind of go like this. But the problem with that is you don't really know if it's straight or crooked or if it's there's gaps and sort of that sort of thing. So what you want to do is actually just take your picture, lay it face down then pull off a piece of masking tape that's about as long as your picture is wide and tape it halfway on and halfway off like this. I'm only pressing with my finger where the paper is. Then I'm gonna flip it right side up. And the beauty of that is that the sticky side of the tape is up. Um, another thing is be very careful that your pencil line that you made there are facing down. You do not want those to show in the end. So now I can see what I'm doing and I can frame Daniel's beautiful portrait here. When it looks centered and I don't have any white gaps around the edge, I can just come up here and press to stick the tape on there. And then I flip it over and tape the rest of it all the way on on all four sides. Now I would do, I would plaster the whole edge like this because you don't want any gaps to uh, appear between the picture and the mat board. The final step here is simply to attach a name tag and we typically will do that in the bottom right hand corner. And I also have a small trick for this. In the Lynn family Christmas, we always save our bows because we're cheap. I mean thrifty, and we don't want to buy new ones every year. So we save them in a bag and then take them out, and then we make a nice little loop of tape so we can use those same Christmas bows the, the next Christmas again like that. So you can do one or two of those. Uh, just stick it on the back of the name tag and put it in the bottom right-hand corner and fill it out completely. You put your name, your first and last name, so the judges in the art show know who you are who made this awesome work of art. Your class, which in this case is art one or drawing and painting or whatever class you're in. Your period, so Daniel's in my R4 class, that's what he'll write there. And then the title, instead of just self-portrait or completion portrait, think of a creative title that will sort of maybe influence the way that the viewer interprets your work of art. I saw a really cool thing this weekend where there was these two leaves that were kind of uh, decayed and they're kind of see-through like lace. I wish I could show you a picture of it right now. Um, but they looked exactly the same and one was titled Fossilized Leaf and the other one was called Angel Wing Study. Which one do you think is more interesting? Shines daily on the mountain top. I took a trip on a sailing ship, and when I reached Jamaica, I made a stop. But I sad to say I'm on my way. Won't be back for many a day. My heart is down, my head is turning around. I had to leave my friends in Kingston Town. up the mat just ask for help because 95% of the time I can fix it so don't be embarrassed and like tear it up or throw it in the garbage just say hey Mr. Lynn I think I messed up um, most likely we can take care of it so thanks guys <laughs>